What's up, guys? I'm Captain Mike, and welcome back to Florida Sport Fishing TV Plus. A couple quick announcements, and then we're going to get started. Uh, first of all, as you can see, we're not inside our rigging station here today. Decided to bring it out on the CV. Just an absolutely beautiful day, and just wanted to share some of these gorgeous blue skies with you. Uh, real quick, Florida Sport Fishing TV Season 13 starts right around the corner here later this week on the Sportsman Channel. Of course, you can see that first episode right here under our new releases. The same for our new instructional series, Captain Mike's Rigging Station. You can watch it right here, uh, like I said, under new releases or under Captain Mike's Rigging Station, that playlist. And throughout the season... The episodes will be posted here before they're actually seen on TV, so you get a first look at them. All right, let's get into it here. We're going to talk about something that is rarely talked about during the winter when it comes to offshore fishing, and that's trolling blackfin tuna. Okay, it's something that I've touched on in the past, and I want to talk more about it because now's a great time to do it. You know, not a lot of guys are blackfin tuna fishing in the winter, but they should be because there's a lot of fish around. We tend to see bigger fish move in shallower. That's certainly here the case in the Florida Keys. Uh, it's always a possibility up the coast to pluck one on a kite bait or something like that. Certainly not peak season up there, um, but plenty of footballs around, plenty of skipjacks around, bonitas, a lot of action offshore that you can get in on by trolling. Um, and certainly here, like I said, across the Keys, the blackfin bite seems to peak in the winter as far as I'm concerned. There's a lot of fish out there on the humps, uh, the marathon hump in particular. Everybody's going out there and live chumming, and you just don't have to. Don't think, hey, man, I can't go fish the marathon hump because I don't have 500 pilchards. That's not the case at all. As a matter of fact, a recent trip out there, all we did was troll, and we literally left them biting. We got tired of catching them and split. It's that easy. But like with everything, you've got to do it right. It's all in the details, and every little detail matters in order for you to be successful. So regardless of where you're fishing, let's talk about some of the fundamentals, and then we'll get right into the tackle here and discuss this in detail. Uh, first of all, obviously, you've got to be trolling in areas that are likely going to hold the blackfin tunas, right? Remember, this is a fast-growing fish. He's always on the move. He's always looking for food. So the key is finding that bait. May it be flying fish, squid, uh, small little white bait, silver sides. I don't care what it is. You need the bait to be prevalent. And these tunas, I'll tell you, they're not going to be far from that bait. The depth, uh, I'd say wintertime trolling tactics for the blackfin, short of going out to the humps. Believe it or not, 300 to 500 feet. That's what I'm going to say. 300 to 500 feet, if I had to narrow it down, would be that zone. And it's right in between, right? It's right in between that shallower edge where, you know, everybody spent a lot of time wahoo fishing, including myself, and sail fishing and kite fishing. It's deeper than that. But it's not way offshore on the sword grounds if you're up there off Miami, Fort Lauderdale, or way offshore here at the humps, you could do that as well, right? But we know it's obviously a lot deeper out there. But these tactics work in that whole zone, in the three to 500 foot range and way offshore as well. So we know we've got to be in an area, you know, that has clean water, that's rich in bait. Birds are a dead giveaway. Working birds are like a neon sign that says, hey, put your baits in right here. You're going to hook up. Uh, you know, frigates flying around, bird life is key. Grass, weed, not so important here. I got to be honest with you. As a matter of fact, I haven't seen a strong correlation between sargasm weed and blackfin tuna schools. As a matter of fact, I prefer there to be no grass at all. Number one, I'm not looking for the dolphin. That's not why I'm out there. It's a different trip altogether. Number two, it's less time that I'm spending clearing baits, you know, potentially getting fouled up on my lures from all of the grass. So I like it to be nice and clean where I could set a spread, you know, dial in the speed and not have to worry about it at all. Um, and I should mention, you know, when I'm offshore trolling, 
my Furuno is always on the, not only the fish finder and the chart plotter, but the bird radar, you know, or the radar in the bird mode. I'm looking for birds where, you know, distances where I can't see with the naked eye. Okay. Cause I can only see so far. Right. But with that bird mode, I can pick off birds miles away. I could then zero in on them with a pair of stabilized Fujinon binoculars and really just key in on the action because it's about timing. Um, and it's about maximizing my time on the water. Early in the day, late in the day are both real good. But here in the winter time, we tend to see these fish bite throughout the day, okay, throughout the whole day. So, you know, you're not limited to that first or last couple hours of the day, at least not now in the dead of the winter, you know, even here in the Keys. Um, so keep that in mind as well. And it's just a great tactic. You know, I love to troll. I really do. If it's for Wahoo, if it's for Dolphin, whatever, I like to troll. I like getting those bites one on, two on, three on. Reels are screaming. It's just so much fun. You know, it's like long periods of boredom followed by short periods of just absolute intense excitement. But when it's on, it's on, and it's really a lot of fun. You know, these black fins, they pull hard. Even a five-pound black fin, a football, it pulls like a 15-pound fish. I mean, these things are crazy. And, of course, a full-grown 20 to 30-pounder, that's, you know, I don't need to tell you, that's just an epic battle right there. And it also all boils down to the appropriate class tackle for a number of reasons, right? So we know we need to fish in areas that are likely going to hold the fish that we're looking for. We know we're looking for signs, the clean water, bait-rich waters, um, low-light conditions preferably, but not necessary. Certainly the birds, you know, birds have to be present somewhere or it's very unlikely you're going to find any tunas. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind. You may want to run and gun a little bit until you do key in on some bird action. And like I said, also use the electronics, use what your boat's equipped with in order to key in, you know, in order to dial in and to narrow down the search. That bird mode is essential. The fish finder, I'm constantly looking under the boat, you know, seeing are there bait pods. I'm not necessarily looking for fish. I'm looking for bait because I know if I find a bait, the black fins are not going to be far behind. So we've covered all of that. You know, winter time here, we've covered the time, certainly dawn to dusk, but any time throughout the day, you can give this a whirl and, and I bet you're going to be successful. I really do. Okay. So really the only thing now to talk about is the trolling speed, the tackle that we choose, setting the spread, so on and so forth. So check this out. <laughs> For over 80 years, Furuno Innovations have helped more fishermen find and catch more fish than any other brand. And we're raising the bar again with Navnet TZ Touch 3's new PBG and Fish It Drifted Technologies. Build your own three-dimensional shaded relief charts to find trophy fish others have missed. Perform accurate drifts the first time, every time. Be the one everyone follows. When you're serious about fishing, lead the way and get serious with Furuno. All right, guys, here we are. We're back. If you're just joining us, we're talking about trolling blackfin tuna, wintertime tactics, Florida Keys, the southeast, great fishery. A lot of guys are not capitalizing on this. It's a great plan B if you're wahoo fishing and you need something to do later in the morning. Maybe you went deep dropping or sorting and it didn't pay off and you want to troll on the way home. Again, it's just a great target and a great 
plan B kind of uh, application. So certainly something that you need to have in your arsenal. We talked about where to fish. You know, let's talk about the tackle. This is really, really important. We're fishing Chaos Gold Rods. They're seven foot rods rated for 15 to 30 pound line. Okay, it's a composite rod. It's a combination of fiberglass and graphite for both sensitivity and strength. Incredibly light. I can fish with this all day long and never get fatigued. Plenty of backbone, but it's sensitive and fun. So a five pound fish is a ball to catch. However, I can handle a 85 pound fish. You're going to pluck sailfish, big kings, wahoo, all sorts of stuff. And you've got to be ready for that. So you need a rod that can handle some of those bigger fish while simultaneously being a lot of fun on the smaller football size tunas. The rod is matched to a Shimano Talica 16. Number of reasons we choose this reel. Line capacity, a ton of line capacity. Very, very important in this application because we're fishing multiple lines. And I'll tell you what, even big fish eat these small baits, elephants eat peanuts. So I've got to be ready for everything. Super smooth drag. That's vital, okay, that lever drag, I can't tell you, I mean, a little zing pow and you're going to lose a fish instantly just like that. So you need to have a silky smooth drag system. It's also very, very light, you know, whatever this proprietary material is, if it's aluminum or some super, I don't care what, whatever it is, it's super light and super strong and that's what's important to me. The reel is filled with high-vis 20-pound test diamond line. I don't need anything heavier than 20-pound in this application, and it gives me a lot of line capacity. I can handle big fish with 20-pound test, plus all my lures are really going to track and swim naturally with a relatively light line. And even a small 5 to 10-pound tuna is going to be very sporty on this tackle. So just a great setup. I don't care if it's the orange crush or a high-vis chartreuse kind of color from Diamond Line, as long as it's high-vis. These are the same outfits, I think I mentioned this earlier, that we use kite fishing. So it's just a great, versatile, all-around outfit. Light-duty trolling, kite fishing, bottom fishing, king mackerel fishing, slow trolling. We do all sorts of stuff with this. The high-vis line, I don't want that going directly to the lure because, again, it's high-vis. It allows me to track that line behind the boat, especially if I'm fishing 6, 8, 10, 12 lines. Having the ability to track each of those baits and each of those lines is absolutely vital. Okay, really, really important. But I want some stealth, so I add about 20 feet of either a blue or a clear top shot. In this case, I've got 20 pound line on the reel. I've got 20 feet of 30 pound in the offshore blue. Okay, just something that really blends right into the environment. Okay, and then that is finished off with a selection of different lures. And I'm gonna to explain to you what I'm fishing here and why. Okay, but there's really nothing else. There's no big uh, snap swivels, you know, as you can see, look, this is the end of that top shot right there. And I'm connecting it to the leader on the lure right here with just a small little barrel swivel. That's all that is, just a little barrel swivel, okay? There's no big snap. If you have a big snap on there, you know what's going to happen. It's going to catch grass. And if it catches a little grass, that's going to turn into a lot of grass. And there goes your whole spread and you're out of business. It could potentially tangle other lines. At the very least, you've got to bring that one in, clear it, reset it. Total pain in the ass completely. So keep everything as sleek and as, you know, really streamlined as possible. I really want you to get a good look at this because it's that important. I mean, just look at that connection right there. Okay, how streamlined it is. It's a little 50 pound diamond ball bearing swivel, a little crimp right there. Okay, just an improved clinch knot on the 30 pound mono. It's so clean. I could even trim that down even a little bit more. Okay, and that again is just going to allow me a really clean presentation. Now, I like sets of rods. You guys know that. And I believe I'm a strong believer that if you fish, a set of trolling outfits and you're relatively pulling the same lures, they should all be the same rods and reels. It's just easy for everybody to use. They're easy to move around at the different positions. Yeah, there's applications where different rods in different positions, but not in this. And this, if you can set a pattern of four, six, eight, you know, of identical rod and reel outfits, 
really going to be a benefit to you for a number of reasons. Now, at the end of the day, all of this doesn't matter if you can't get the fish to bite, right? And that's where the lures come into place, okay? I'm a big lure fisherman. I prefer to catch fish on a lure probably 10 to 1. Um, if it's wahoo, tunas, dolphin, whatever, you know, I like the challenge of catching fish on fake baits. Bottom fish too, groupers and snappers. Um, I just get a big thrill out of it. And you should as well. Fresh bait is vital in today's highly pressured fisheries, and no one makes it easier to catch live bait than the Bally Hoop. With a complete line of collapsible hoop nets and accessories, the Bally Hoop is a must have for every angler. Simply deploy the Bally Hoop and watch the magic. With the Bally Hoop, catching live bait is clean, fast, and simple. Ask for the Bally Hoop at your local tackle shop or visit us online to find a dealer near you. Chaos. Gear matters. Oh my God! That right there, baby, is deep dropping. Chaos. Gear matters. Shop online or visit our new superstore for everything fishing. Uh, but in this particular case, you know, I'm pulling small baits. Look at this. This is a little Zack Attack Micro. It's from Zack Attack Lures. I'm not even sure if they still make this little micro bait. If not, you know, they do have some other small baits. But as you can see, it's maybe four or five inches long. It's not very big. And it mimics a small squid. That is the primary forage that these blackfin tunas are feeding on, are these small little squid. Okay, how do I know? Well, every single blackfin, I clean it at the table, I inspect its stomach contents, and they're all loaded in these small baits, okay? These little squid like this, um, or very tiny bait fish, sometimes no more than one inch, okay? You've got a 25 or 30 pound fat ass blackfin tuna, and he's got 300 bait fish in his stomach, but they're this big, they're tiny. These fish have incredible eyesight, and they primarily feed on small forage. It's not a wahoo. It's not a sailfish. It's not a king mackerel. It's not a yellowfin tuna. It's a blackfin. And characteristically, I would say 90 to 95% of their diet is made up of very, very small forage. So I'm going to match the hatch, right, and mimic that. I could do it with either, and again, I'm going to get a little bit closer to you here, we can do it with either a little skirted lure, just like that. You can see it's got a little chugger head right there. Very sleek, clean little body. Doesn't catch a lot of grass. I've rigged it with a long shank coastal black 9.0 VMC hook. There it is right there. Okay, that slides right over. Very clean, not a lot of hardware, very easy to pull. We'll skip, you know, and swim right below the surface, just like a live squid. It is deadly, absolutely deadly. Now, in addition to pulling one, two, three, four, five, six of these, I'll also pull a couple of baits that are going to swim a little bit deeper in the water column. And that's this little Mad Mac, right? This little magic bait. Look, Mad Max are something we've been using Wahoo fishing in that 200 size with incredible success. So I decided to scale it down and see if they would work tuna fishing and they work equally as well. Just of course, the much smaller version. I mean, look at that. If that's not a pilcher, if that's not just a small mackerel or a tiny little bonita, or just something, you know, a few inches, that's all. You can't go much smaller than that because then you can't pull it fast enough. So that right there seems to absolutely be key. I'm not even sure if that's the 80 size, um, but it's small, you know, as you can see. With both of these baits, may it be the small little Mad Mac, or may it be, you know, the little skirted Zack Attack type micro lures, it's about pulling them fast, okay? I like to pull these baits at eight, if I can, 10 miles an hour. I will pull them that fast if conditions allow it. You're not going to outrun those tunas. They'll be able to catch those baits easily, okay? Very, very easily. So I like to pull them fast. I'll put a couple of these Mad Max closer to the boat right here on some flat lines. They're going to swim just below the surface, but they will be below the surface. And they'll be my short baits. And then I'll put those little skirted squid 
set way back. And it, it's all up to you as to how many you want to set. Like I said, aboard our 39 CB here and with these 20 foot taco riggers, I could set three on this side, three on this side, two more flat, that's eight right there, one short, one long, that's 10, plus two deep Mad Max. I can go up to 12 lines. I don't recommend that because you know what? Generally, when you hook these black fins, when you hook one, you keep trolling, keep moving forward, keep going, count at least 10. And one often turns into two, three, four. And, you know, you really don't need to get five or six on at one time. You know, one or two fish at a time is fine. Um, plus, you may not have that level of tackle. You may not have, you know, the team on the boat. And you don't want to pull too much because you don't want to get tangled. You don't want to spend your day untangling. It's better to fish less lines, okay, and have a cleaner presentation. I don't care if that's two or four, because you certainly can do that. Two deeper Mad Max, the Nomad Mad Max in the 80 size, two Zack Attacks, the squids up on top, maybe add another one right down the middle. What a killer small boat spread, right? Even if you don't have outriggers, you can fish that spread. You can fish a five rod deadly effective spread and not concern yourself with getting tangled or anything like that. So don't overdo it, but do it right. And remember, check all your connections, okay? Check your drags often, make sure your knots are perfect, any frays, kinks, anything like that, retie your rigs, okay? Don't let angler failure or tackle failure enter the equation. Um, additionally, you know, you get a fish on, obviously you're going to want to work that area, but remember that these fish are on the move. They're not sitting in one spot. They're constantly chasing bait. So you may hook up, but then you've got to zero in on what direction is that school moving in. So you can intercept them, get your lures in front of them, and get hooked up again. Okay. And finally, it's a two black fin per person limit. So that's why I was saying earlier, you don't want to hook five at one time, you know, there goes, you, you just caught your limit if there's two or three guys on the boat. So, you know, if you want to enjoy it, and of course you can release the fish, but just remember that don't get carried away, two black fins per person. So that's it. As a reminder, check out our new releases, watch our new shows, stay tuned for another great episode. You know, coming up next week, we're going to upload it. Um, remember to take advantage of our 24 seven fishing helpline. You can email Mike at fsftv.com with any questions and we'll be happy to, to hook you up. So appreciate you being a fan. And if I don't talk to you, have a wonderful new year. Hope you enjoyed this episode. We talked a lot about tackle, a lot about finding these fish, staying on them. Got them. All right, all right. Nice job. What a fish. Oh yeah, that's a fat one right there. That's what we want. Oh, nice one. Look at that one. Got it. Nice. That's a tuna. That's what it's all about. Right there. Oh, my God. That's what I'm talking about.